What's good YouTube? House of Champs here with Joey Chow. A lot of you have been wondering about how to play Monarchs and this man managed to top 16 the ARG with them in Phoenix. Okay, yeah, so I decided to play the Monarch deck because a lot of people don't know what the cards do or how to play around it exactly, so... And the deck is really powerful when it goes off, so... I guess I just go through the cards and kind of explain them. So this is kind of a, a tour guide, so it kind of... So it gets this monster out, and when Eidos is normal summoned, or, spe or special summoned, you get an additional tribute summon. So usually the play is you summon Idea, and his or her effect brings out this guy, and then his effect lets you tribute someone again, so you can tribute someone for any level one or level two, one tribute or two tribute monster. And then they also have graveyard effects. So when this card goes to the graveyard, you can add one of your banished spells back from to your hands. And then when he's in the graveyard, you can banish him to summon this from the graveyard, and then this, her effect will activate again to bring out another one, just for so you can tr summon twice that turn because you get the additional tribute summon. And then, so there's two main monarchs. So, er so there's Erebus and Aether. So Erebus's effect is so they both have an effect for when you send to, for when you summon them. So they both send a monarch spell or trap to the graveyard to do different things. So usually you send the uh, draw spell, which is a plus one when it's in the graveyard, and the trap spell, which is also a plus one. You can just bring it back whenever you want because it's a trap. So it's a plus two just from th from that. And then his effect is it shuffles a card on the field into the deck or in the hand randomly. So his is pretty good. And then this effect is it summons a monarch from your deck and then it bounces in the end phase. But this thing also has an additional effect is that you can summon it on your opponent's turn. So like if they're trying to get around your field spell by lowering your monster's attack, you can maybe storm forth and tribute their monsters for this to summon out another monster and you'll probably just kill them the next turn because they have so much attack. Or you can just tribute your own guys because this will have the fresh 2800 attack too. Nice. Cool. And then, so I only play, and then the only other tribute monsters I play are two Vanity's Fiend and one Majesty's Fiend. So you just kind of play Majesty's Fiend because it's a tenacity target, because it's got a thousand defense, and Vanity's Fiend only unfortunately has twelve hundred defense. And then, so you can search it off Return of the Monarchs, or you can reveal it for tenacity, which will search for any spell or trout. And I just play Vanity's Fiend because almost nobody has an out to this card besides setting a Mirror Conductor and then summoning another monster if I don't get over it, so it's pretty good. And then you pretty much play three Maxis, so... They'll know you're playing Monarchs because they'll ask you how many cards are in your extra deck and it's zero. So because of the field spell makes you do that. So while you have no cards in your extra deck for the field spell, you can your opponent can't summon monsters from the extra deck. So it's really good. So this is kind of for if they ever break your luck, you have Maxi because they need to make a really, really strong board that usually has to include like a Dweller and maybe another rank 4 or Infinity or something. And this will stop them or give you enough cards to easily come back. And just when you go second, you kind of need to do this so they don't set up an unbreakable board of Abyss Dweller or maybe another rank 4. Alright, so this is the best card in the deck, probably. So what this does is you discard a Monarch Spell or Trap, and then you can banish it to reveal three Monarch Spells or Traps. So pretty much any Monarch Spell that you play three of, you can just banish it and have instant access. And then when it's... So because it banishes itself, when you tribute off Idea, you can add it back to your hand. So you can use the draw spell effect as many times as you want, but you can only use the crescent effect once. So usually you just send this, after your engine's gone, you just send these to the graveyard because they're plus ones and it thins your deck. So yeah, it's really strong. Uh, this is the only reason I play the deck. Uh, because uh, while I control the tribute summon monster, my opponent cannot special summon from the extra deck. But a way you can play around this in Pendulums is you... Pendulum summon out, you kind of have to draw kind of an, an ideal hand of a few monsters, and yeah. then you can tribute summon for monkey board, and because you have a tribute summon monster, you can now special summon for the extra deck, so that's cool. Uh, three tenacity, uh, this searches for any monarch spell or trap, so it's pretty good. Uh, three stormforth, you kind of just play three because when you want to banish for the crescent, if you want stormforth, you'll get it 100% of the time, and it's really broken with aether because you can stormforth their monster and then tribute their monster for aether. So you pretty much just rank for any threatening XYZ, whether it's Ptolemyos. So you usually do it on Ptolemyos and not Nova if they let you, because if you put Nova in the grave, they can soul charge it back and then put Infinity on top. So usually Ptolemyos is what you want to stormforth, or like a Dweller or Castell that's threatening enough. And then the deck is honestly kind of inconsistent, so I play these draw cards. So three Upstar Goblins and one Chicken Game. So I decided to play this because it actually has the hidden effect of when your life points are lower than your opponents, you can't, you don't take battle damage. So maybe it'll let you stall it a little bit longer if you brick. And, I, and my mentality was if I brick, I'll probably just lose the game anyway, so it doesn't matter if my opponent will get an additional card. So playing 36 cards. Yeah, 36. And then, haven't said that before. 
Uh, Return of the Monarchs, so you can actually play around Solemn Strike with this because when you tribute someone a monster, you can activate the Monarch effect as Chain Link 1 and this is Chain Link 2. So you search for a Monarch, so maybe you tribute for Erebus, you search for an Aether, then you send two, and then you shuffle the card, not the back row because it's dead. And then it counts for when you tribute someone on your opponent's turn too, so it's pretty good. And you can search for Majesty's Fiend, which can be good against Mermo. Uh, Rhoda, the only target I believe is Idea, which kind of gets your engine going, but yeah. you can honestly play without Idea and the other guy because you can, the field spell has another effect of once per turn you can reduce one of the monsters in your hand by two levels, yeah. so you can just tribute someone for one, and the trap card, which I'll get to soon, it actually summons from itself from the graveyard, so you can reduce and then tribute summon, so yeah. usually if your spell and traps are going, you're, 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 you're fine. Uh, Foolish Burial, so whenever Idea is sent to the graveyard, period, you can add one of your banished cards. So if you draw a spell and then you still break, you can Foolish Burial send Idea, and then it will add back your draw spell so you can draw some more. And so we're playing 34 cards. Uh, kind of, yeah. Foolish. Yeah, and... Extra slots for Ideas. Yeah, and so Foolish Burial has... Another use it has is it can send Erebus, and when Erebus is in the graveyard, you can discard any Monarch spell or trap to add any Monarch with 2400 attack or more and 1000 defense. It doesn't have to be just Erebus, so you can add like Majesty's Fiend if you want to, and maybe attack over like a big ship because it gains 800 attack. Judge Stephen, okay. you yeah, so that's, I'm pretty sure that was the game. Uh, one for one. So this is actually really, really strong too because you don't use your normal summon. So you can one for one bring out a level. You can bring out Edia to bring out Eidos, and then you can normal, su so you get the additional normal summon, yeah. and then you can, so you tribute summon, and then you still have your extra normal again, and you can just banish this from the graveyard or bring this back again, and maybe the trap, so you can tribute summon two monsters. It's probably like one of the only ways to break like really hard pendulum fields is this card, but yeah, so it's really strong. It also lets you play, play around effect Veiler, because if any of these cards get Veilered when you normal summon, you're pretty much done for that turn. So if you open this, even with this, you take the minus one by discarding this because it plays around Veiler. Okay. And then I just play two of these because there isn't really a need for the third. And if you're resolving the draw card, you're probably going to win. And yeah. So most people don't know you can just summon this whenever you want. Yeah, you sure. can chain to Dweller. This is a trap card. Yeah, exactly. So Dweller is definitely the best XYZ you can summon against this deck, but this is helps to sit around, I guess. Nice extra deck. Yeah, no cards in the extra deck because of the field spell. Uh, so I play two Light and Darkness Dragon for the mirror match. So the only way they can get around this card is if they activate a card that will be getting negated and then chain Stormforth. And then tribute my guy if they draw a monarch, but even then they use two cards and like the mirror match is kinda iffy, but it's got auto win potential. Oh, and for the mirror match also two mystical ref panel. So it's good if you go first and you go second. Because you can set it before they use their draw cards. And then if they go second, they can banish for the crescent. Attention. And then you can give them the draw spell because you get to choose which one they get and then yeah. they'll instantly just play it so it's instantly live. So it's a three card swing. So instead of them drawing two cards and being able to banish, they only get a banish for one and you draw two cards. So it's really, really good. Can you use it on Stormforth or no? Uh, you cannot use it on Stormforth because it, t it affects both players. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty much just only hits the draw card. That's why I didn't side three. If it hits Stormforth, I'd probably side three rough panels. Uh, I side another Majesty's Fiend just against like Mermel or Cosmos because it's really good. Awesome. Uh, two Veiler. So these are also kind of for the mirror match because it, obviously it's really good in the mirror. And it also, if they summon Fog King, you can Veiler it so it has zero attack and you can just attack over it yeah. with anything. Uh, two Chalice, so this is what you side when you go for second against Pendulum, so you have the three Maxis and the two Chalices, so this can helpfully get around Master Key Beetle or Abyss Dweller if you go second, or even Infinity if that's all they make, so. And two MSTs and one twist, Twin Twister, so the reason I only say three spell and trap removal is because I draw so many cards and I don't also want to draw too many of them and I felt like I would want Mystical Space Typhoon more because I'd rather have my combo yeah. cards and but I did feel like one twister might be needed if I had hit multiple so yeah. I wanted to give myself that opportunity be able to pitch like the Prime Monarch for free or something yeah and then this was kind of cool so I cited three scolding because anytime you go first you just want to open field spell and a monarch so if they twin twister you can scolding it if they mirror conductor if they turn toe to switch your guys you can just scolding it and then you'll probably just win the game because especially if they twin twister because to be able to out the field spell and have another out and make a play without summoning Dweller will be like really hard. So three scolding just any time you're going first against pretty much almost any matchup is pretty good. Any uh, shout outs? Uh, shout outs to uh, Scott Page because he made most of the deck and then we just kind of, he just, we kind of just talked about theory and then, yeah, I haven't been playing too much. But uh, so the Monarch deck is, it's really powerful if it goes off, but it's pretty inconsistent. So I wouldn't play it in any longer term. I just played it for this tournament because I thought it was, it was I thought it was pretty good and a lot of people, all my opponents just didn't know how to play against it. So. Well, thanks for explaining the deck, man. Yep, thanks, John.